Well, good morning, everyone. Are we excited to, to make some banana bread today? Can I see hands? How many of you guys like banana bread? Yay. Did you guys know that banana bread is one of the best recipes? Like if you have leftover ones to make French toast. Does anybody like French toast? Banana bread makes awesome French toast if you have any leftover the next day. Just a little, little tip there. All right. So how many of you guys are going to be doing the banana bread with me today? Test your hands if you guys are making the banana bread with me today. It's okay if you're not. If not, we'll talk about the ingredients and what we're going to do next. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remind you guys about all the ingredients. And I want you guys to check and make sure you have them if we are, if you're, if you're cooking with us today. Okay. So the first thing is, do you have your two cups of flour? Can you guys show me your two cups of flour? I've got my two cups of flour right here. Two cups of flour. Awesome. Okay. Got a two cups of flour and we're going to need three quarters of a cup of sugar. Do you guys have sugar? Awesome. Okay. And we're going to need butter. Um, an entire stick of butter is actually a half a cup of butter. So you perfect. What we're going to do is this is, this is part of the secret recipe. Okay. You guys all ready for a secret part? We want to melt this butter. You can put it into a measuring cup and have your, your parent or your learning coach, whoever is with you guys, um, put it into a measuring cup and you're going to put it into the microwave for about 30 seconds. And you guys will see here, it gives us a perfect half a cup of melted butter. And I saw Sarah already did that. I saw you hold up your measuring cup with the melted butter. So good job. Fantastic. And then we're going to need two eggs. So if you haven't cracked them and put them in a cup already, get your two eggs, crack them and put them into a cup. Awesome. And then these are very small amounts of ingredients. You're gonna need, gosh, I need to find where my, here we go. Uh, we're gonna need one small teaspoon here. Oh my goodness, mine are falling all over the place. One small teaspoon of baking soda. So I'm gonna grab my small teaspoon of baking soda here. You guys see that? I'm, now I have a special bowl that I'm going to do all of my dry ingredients and I have a special bowl that I'm going to do all my wet ingredients. Okay. So in your bowl for your dry ingredients. All right. I'm putting my baking powder. Now you said baking powder or baking soda. I'm sorry. Thank you for catching that baking soda. Now baking. I'm glad you said that. Please explain before you put in the salt, um, the difference between baking soda and baking powder and why you don't want to mix up the two. So your baking soda and baking powder are very different. Um, one of them sits there and actually helps you with the taste and the taste is gonna be very different. Just letting you guys know, do not mix up baking soda and baking powder. Baking powder, we use a lot more for when we're rising things as well. It kind of helps with the yeast and everything else when you're cooking. We, you don't wanna mix that up, all right? So baking soda. And then you guys see here, just this is just salt for taste at one small teaspoon of salt. So right now I've only got like very minimal ingredients in here. It's just dissolved in the baking soda so far. And I'm going to add in my sugar. Go ahead and pour in your sugar. And add in your flour. So you have four dry ingredients. All right. Now I'm going to set this aside for a moment and we're going to work on our wet ingredients. Okay. Our wet ingredients is here's part of the secret. So you guys don't, do you have your melted butter? Give me a thumbs up. If you guys have your melted butter, start with your melted butter, put your melted butter. Wait, wait, wait a second before you do that. Can you just go over what you put in as the dry ingredients again? Sure. So our dry ingredients are salt, baking soda, flour, and sugar. Four things in our dry ingredients. And yeah, there a couple of people are saying just slow down just a little bit. Oh, okay, you have small okay. hands. They're trying very, very much to keep up with you. <laughs> well, I, I have my little, my little helper just got here too. And Anna, you want to make sure you use baking soda, not baking powder. If you use baking powder, it's not going to taste nearly as good. So I have two helpers here today. Um, this recipe is kindergarten proof all the way up to 
high school or older. And so just you guys know, uh, this is a perfect recipe that even my, uh, my rising first grader here, Laura, say hi, Laura. And I have my rising third grader, Lena here, who are gonna be helping me make this. So it's perfect for little hands. And do you guys like, you guys like how it tastes? Love your banana bread, mommy. You guys hear that? They love the banana bread. All right. So I want a thumbs up when everybody has their four dry ingredients. Give me thumbs up four dry ingredients. Awesome. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. In fact, I'm seeing double thumbs up. I love it. <laughs> All right. Are you guys ready for our wet ingredients? Uh yeah. What was the last two? So Steve wanted to know what was the last two ingredients. It was, I believe, a teaspoon of salt. It was a, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking soda. And then we did, what was it, a third, uh, a third of a cup? Or how much of it sugar? Was, the sugar was three-fourths of a cup. Three-fourths of a cup. And then we did two cups of flour, right? That's right. Okay. Everybody got that? Um, I thought it was a fourth a cup of salt. No, no, just a teaspoon. Just, just for, just for taste. It's just for taste. So if you guys remember, this was my, my little salt here. It's just for taste. Yes, yeah, a teaspoon. That's right. Yep. So just a teaspoon of salt. This is, this is my teaspoon right here. So a teaspoon of salt teaspoon of baking soda, a third, uh, a three fourths of a cup of sugar and two cups of flour. Yep. And then for all the parents there, please go preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Cause I know that can take some time. So while, while we're doing all the mixing and the prepping um, for all the parents and adults in the room, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> And some of you, I see Kian might be a little bit ahead. That's okay. I, now, if you're if you're baking yours now and it ends up being done before we end, man, we want to see how it turns out. <laughs> but I, I think we're ready to move on into the wet ingredients. So we're going to move on to the wet ingredients. If somebody, if you're missing something, um, as far as a, a step, just talk to me in chat. I'll be able to uh, work with you guys, and I'll put some stuff in chat to help you too. Um, if we need to talk to Dr. Shaker about maybe slowing down a little bit or going over something again, we're happy to do that. Okay, y'all? Yeah. All right. I want everybody to get your bananas. Your, your, you guys see mine? They've, they've got all these spots on them. The riper they are, the sweeter the bread. Okay? The riper they are, the sweeter the bread. So get your bananas, your three bananas, and put them into your dry, uh, sorry, into your wet ingredient bowl. So I'm going to drop my bananas in here. You can see them like they're totally falling apart, which is perfect. And right now the wet ingredient bowl has nothing in it, correct? Correct. The wet ingredient has nothing in it. I'm just dropping my bananas in. You guys can see like they are falling right apart. They've got like the brown spots. That's perfect. Falling right in there. Okay. So get those bananas in. I'm dropping my, my last one. My last one in. It's falling can you apart. Go outside? It's inside. I'm, my, my, my kiddos are, we have a, we have fresh vegetables in our garden and they like to go and pick them every day. So they're going outside to go get us fresh ingredients from our garden. So how many I bananas was it again? Three bananas. Three bananas, y'all. Three bananas. And I've got a fork and I'm going to mash up my bananas. I'm going to show you guys what that looks like as I, if you guys see this, I'm just mashing, mashing them up with my fork. And um, now I know you mentioned two eggs. We're cracking the eggs eventually. Do they have to be beat first before we pour them into? They do not have to be beat first. There we go, Paul. There's your answer. We can beat them once they're inside. If you want to beat them first, you totally can. There's, that's totally fine. But uh, the big secret with this is going to be adding in the, the melted butter with the bananas and mixing those two in together first before we add the other stuff in. It gives it that a lot more of that um, consistency and a sweeter flavor. Uh, 
it just melted in perfectly. So you guys can see here, I'm still, I'm still working on my bananas. Need a little bit more work here. I'm just uh, smashing them with my, my fork. You guys show me your bananas. You guys working on bananas? Ooh, nice. Keep smash. So mine are almost completely smashed, almost. This is what mine look like right now. You guys can see it's all like mushy. I can I can like mix it around. When yours are all mushy and mixed, if yours are mushy and mixed, you can add in the butter. If they are mushy and mixed, you can add in your melted butter. And if you're going to melt the butter, how many, how long should you put it in the microwave again? Just 30 seconds. It, it goes so quickly. All right. And what you're going to do is once you have that melted butter in, you're going to slowly just keep mixing it in with those smashed bananas that you just mashed up. It, it is one stick of butter. And if you guys see on the one stick of butter, it tells you that that's half a cup because you need a half a cup of butter. So one stick of butter. Um, melt into exactly half a cup and that's exactly what you guys need. So one stick of butter melted um, or half a cup of melted, depending on how you guys are reading it. And guys, remember, you know, if, if, if you uh, need us to slow down or you want a, a reminder of some stuff, um, let me know. Um, and I will be able to go over some stuff again. And also, if you're not doing this right now, we are going to be posting this on YouTube. I will be sharing the email with you guys as well. And you can do it this weekend or anytime you'd like to have some banana bread. And so far, just to um, uh, <laughs> tell her, Anne, I'm glad your mom's good at this. <laughs> um, just a reminder, guys, you know, um, we're just at the point right now where we're mashing bananas. And we just added the butter. All right, so this is my mashed bananas with my butter in it. You guys see that? It's kind of like all, all liquidy now. Here, I'll try to lower my camera for you guys so you guys can see what it looks like. So here's the mashed liquidy butter bananas, all right? All right, when you guys are ready after that, you can add in your eggs. So I have my eggs here. I see my cute eggs and I'm going to go ahead and just pour them in. And if you notice, Dr. Shaka didn't beat the eggs first, but if you want to do that, that's fine too. Either way works fine. And you can mix them right in. You guys can see there, all I did is they're mixed right in as I Now, let me ask you, just out of curiosity, if someone was making this and they didn't want to use butter or use eggs, would they be able to replace anything with, with this particular recipe? With this particular recipe, if you want it to come out the way, was the, the, the taste the way it is, you'd want it, you'd want to make sure that you have it. If you, um, you can use egg whites if you want to be a little bit more healthier about it, but then what's going to happen is you, it might become a little dry. Um, some people use only one egg instead of two eggs. Uh, but if you don't have enough wet ingredients with it, it, it can it can dry up and you can end up with um, dry banana bread, which is not necessarily very yummy. Um, so you guys see here, like this is, we don't put water or milk in this particular recipe. Some people do put milk in banana bread. Uh, this recipe does not call for milk, for milk or um, anything else or vanilla. Some people do that as well. Uh, this is just simply the butter, the, the eggs and the bananas because the bananas give us that moisture right so you guys can see this i, I knew there was going to be someone in here who was vegetarian gabriella uh, thank you i was curious now she mentioned she uses flax meal and water i've heard other people use stuff like instead of butter using applesauce or something like that there's the cool thing with cooking it is your bread it is your recipe you can figure out if you want to add little stuff here or there the most important thing, though, is that you stick to mostly the same ingredients 
such as the flour and your sugar and baking soda, not baking powder. But um, the fact that like, hey, Stephen and Sarah and Catherine, you guys are doing gluten free. That's awesome. You can always adjust stuff a little bit. Talk to your parents, though, first about that, because they'll have a little bit more experience with it. And that's the other thing. So you can have gluten-free um, flour. We have, um, I use that often as well. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. You really won't even notice the difference in it. Um, and then also part of the taste of this is maybe some people like to put some chocolate syrup in it and have like more of a chocolate swirl banana bread. Um, I will show you guys in a few seconds, but I have some walnuts and chocolate chips here. And so I, I use a mix of walnuts and chocolate chips. Uh, some people only like walnuts. Some people only like chocolate chips. You could do chocolate chips, walnuts, and some uh, Hershey syrup or something to give it that extra taste. So it really depends on your taste buds and what you, you know, what you like. Uh, you can use it to be, make the bread. I also use them to decorate the bread. So I'll show you guys that in a, you know, in a, in, a, in just a little bit. Um, is everybody here? Are we ready with our our wet ingredients and our dry ingredients? Someone did have a question if their their um, wet ingredients aren't looking kind of gooey and looking a little watered down. Is there anything to make it more gooey? Well, the, the wet ingredients, if they're following the same recipe, it's going to look this way, which is sort of a little bit of water, water. It's just about mixing it in and then uh, it's going to get less so when we put it in with the flour. Wonderful. Okay. Um, Olivia, you're still not ready yet. Is everybody ready with their wet and dry ingredients? Ra raise your hand or give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you're ready with that stuff. If not, no biggie. I see a lot of thumbs up. All right. All right. Looks like we are good to go. Olivia's ready too. Yeah, let's rock and roll. All right. I'm going to take my wet ingredients and I'm going to put them in with my dry ingredients. Here it comes. And... I don't know if you guys hear my timer in the background. See, I put some banana bread into the oven just before we got started. So that means that the banana bread that I have ready to show you guys is actually just about ready. So we'll check on that in just a moment. All right, and some people um, are coming in a little late. In chat, I'm gonna tell you like what the dry ingredients are, what the wet ingredients are. You might mention them again as well. All right, mix those in. And uh, as my daughters like to compare this, they say it starts looking kind of like Play-Doh as you're mixing it in because it's gooey that way. So you guys can kind of see this here. Do you guys see how it kind of has that consistency of uh, wet Play-Doh in some ways? You want to make sure you mix in all of the dry ingredients. So get anything that was at the bottom of your your bowl. I'm trying to think, uh, I was just trying to remember the wet ingredients that we had. We had three bananas, we had melted butter, and I'm forgetting something here. What else did we add? Oh, the two eggs. The two <laughs> eggs is what we added. So I'm putting that there as well. And just a reminder, if you're working on the wet ingredients, you're just starting out, mash your bananas first. They don't have to be super duper mashed, but you want to get in there with a fork and then you can add the eggs. No shells, shells aren't tasty. And um, you can add in your, uh, butter, make sure it's melted. A stick of butter equals a half a cup. Um, and you want to make sure that the two bowls are separated, at least for now. And what Dr. Shake is doing, you just mix the two together right now, right? I just, I just mixed them together. And so this is my mixed batter. Um, Jeremiah wants to know if you want it to be extra banana-y, um, because banana-y is a word. Um, could you put in four or five bananas? You can. Now, bear in mind, though, it's uh, you might end up with a little extra batter, which uh, 
So that sometimes happens, right? Especially if you put an extra chocolate chips or walnuts and increases the amount in there. Um, so what I do is I usually uh, have it set up. I was going to tell you guys, so he's just kind of like stepped forward, right? Um, so if you like an extra banana and sweet, definitely you can add in more. I always do a couple of banana bread muffins on the side with the extra batter I have. So now mine is mixed, okay? So mine's ready, except we haven't added in our fun ingredients yet. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, while, I'm, while you guys are mixing all that, um, for the parents out there or the adults, I have, um, this is my banana bread uh, silicone pan. I like using silicone pans. And then I also like using parchment paper in it because it helps with it being as sticky. Um, so if you guys have parchment paper, if you don't, it's no big deal. It's just like a little trick I like using. Um, I put the parchment paper inside the pan. Uh, you're going to want to oil your pan or um, if you use ham or uh, whatever your preference is in terms of, you know, so I have here like whatever your preference is in terms of um, making sure it's, it's lubricated with some type of oil. So for me to make it easy, I just spray the inside of it here. I get the inside of the parchment paper. If you don't have parchment paper, again, no big deal. You just, uh, you can either. Awesome. Yeah, I have my muffin, uh, my muffin pan on the other side too, because I, I have a habit of making a little bit too much because I like to put in a lot of chocolate chip and walnuts, which increases the amount. So. I have my, I, I, I got, I was beginning to prepare some extra ones for any, like, you know, to make um, any muffins. If, you know, so if you're doing muffins, you can totally do that too. Now, uh, and just a reminder, we're adding like walnuts or raisins or things after we do all the other steps to the batter, right? Before we put it in our loaf pan or our cupcake right. pan or, you know, or round pan, wherever you want to add it to. I mean, banana bread looks good regardless of the shape. Well, however you guys want to make it, whether you guys are using, uh, you know, a little cake pan, like the, I've even done it in a cupcake pan. So, you know, it really depends. Um, you got to put both the yolk and the whites, the entire egg in. You, you do two whole eggs for the question in the chat. All right, so who is ready? For the fun ingredients. Yeah, show me your fun ingredients. Absolutely. You guys, like, listen, everybody has that little bit of taste of, of what, you know, makes it special. Uh, you know, it might be grandma's, you know, special recipe, right? Um, it could be any number of things. I am going to show you guys, I have chocolate chips and walnuts. I have a cup of mixed chocolate, chocolate chips and walnuts here. I saw Stephen and Sarah had their chocolate chip cups up. That's great. See, Caitlin, you know, the, the, the kids over there are still working on mixing. Paul's still working on his mixing stuff a little bit, too. But this is where you get to add the fun stuff, uh, Nikki. Uh, you know, whether it's chocolate chips, walnuts, raisins. What else do people add to banana bread? chocolate syrup if you want a chocolate like like if you if you add in a little bit of chocolate syrup you'll get like a chocolate banana bread and it is amazing i saw someone said about what about cooked bacon you know i've never tried that before i've never had bacon and bananas together but i feel like everything tastes better with bacon so huh. hey again whatever whatever rocks your taste buds with it right um also um i've heard some people add caramel Ooh, dairy-free chocolate chips, awesome. Um, I like to use the semi-sweet, um, but again, whatever, whatever your preference is, there's no wrong answer to the things you like to add to it, as long as it's edible and healthy, you know, to some degree healthy, right? Not like chocolate chips are healthiest, but hey, we love them. <laughs> All right, so if you guys are ready and your batter is ready, yes, you, in fact, you can make the best um, French toast with banana bread when you're done. So any any leftover French toast, amazing. Um, probably what we'll be having for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take my chocolate chips and my walnuts or, and you, again, whatever you guys wanna do. Um, 
go ahead and put those in. Listen, I'm pretty sure blueberries would probably work as well. Probably even strawberries, honestly. Like I'm thinking about, you know, what you could put in. <laughs> All right, so let's mix those ingredients in. Um, you guys can see here, here's my fun ingredients all getting mixed in. Let's mix those fun ingredients in. And also you might wanna, if, uh, if you have a little bit of um, extra, they're really nice to decorate the top of the banana bread too. Um, I like to decorate the top of my banana bread with whatever ingredients I put in there. So. Oh, great job, Hector. All right, mine are all mixed in. Give me a thumbs up when everybody's got their fun ingredients mixed in. Are we ready to get this stuff in the oven? Almost, it looks like um, we're, we're working their way there. I see Dan is eating the ingredients before they make it in the pan. You want to make sure they make it in the don't, pan, Don't Dan? eat the ingredients. It has raw eggs. We don't want any feeding <laughs> sick. Don't eat the ingredients. Raw eggs, not a good thing to eat, okay? That can make you guys sick. Um, Nikki's putting her stuff in her pan. I'm seeing a lot of you are just about ready to put stuff in, 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 in the oven. I'm going to start putting mine into the pan. And as you're putting stuff in the pan, you want to make sure that it's kind of even, whether you're doing cupcake little pans or you're using a, um, a loaf pan, which is that square pan there, or any other pan that you're using. You want to make sure that the batter is kind of even there. And you don't have to dump it in really quick. You notice Dr. Shaka is taking her time. You want to make sure you don't make a huge mess either, if possible. Some of you already have. Um, and that's okay. <laughs> I'm also putting my extra in my cupcake right now. Like I'm putting. And you, and you don't want to put it in a microwave. You want it, you want it to bake. You want it to take its time to, to really give it time to cook and all the ingredients to mix together. And so that way it tastes lovely. It's, this isn't something you put in the microwave for 30 seconds and it rises up. <laughs> Now, um, after you get done cooking it, if you want to heat it up in the microwave, so that way you have warm banana bread. That's a whole other story. They do heat up very nicely. Um, and if you use them for French toast or things like that, you can add on some extra fresh uh, fruits to it. Um, we have fresh strawberries that we grow in our garden. So we go pick some fresh strawberries and add it on. Uh, you can do any number of, of fun things with it. Um, maybe some whipped cream. Now, if you have one of those microwave ovens that has the toaster oven in it, I mean, the key is that you your oven wants to be at 350 degrees. Is that right? That is correct. You, it, it's going to need, and it's going to need to be heated for quite a while. This takes a good, at least 50 minutes to bake, uh, sometimes a little bit longer. Before I go to put these in the oven, I'm going to show you guys the one that I'm going to be bringing out of the oven because that one is just about ready. And I'm, gonna, and I'm also gonna show you guys how, uh, how you check to see if it's ready. All right, so I'm at the stage where mine is ready almost. I wanna decorate it a little bit first with some extra chocolate chips and walnuts, but mine is just about ready to go into the oven. I'm just cleaning up where I made a little bit of a, a couple of drops around my and because otherwise it will start like, you know, once it, once it gets hard and you start smelling that like burning smell. So you, so you want to make sure you don't have it on the pan um, as much as possible so that you don't get. There we go. So I'll show you guys mine now. Like, so I have my, my muffins here and I have my banana bread in my banana bread pan. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some extra walnuts to decorate them and some extra chocolate chip you guys can do whatever you want you can use whatever you got what you want with it so i have some crushed walnuts here and i'm just gonna throw a little bit on the top it gives it that a little bit of and then they will stay on the top when it bakes which will be really nice i'm just gonna put a couple on the top of my muffins here 
and we will be putting it into the oven momentarily. Anybody else decorating their, their banana bread? Here's my chocolate chips. I'm going to grab some of my chocolate chips and decorate. See some sprinkles on the top there. Just like and that. Nikki, I know you asked, and we're going to get to this, but it goes in the oven for what, at least 15 minutes, you said? Uh, so at least 50 minutes, five zero. 50, five zero, so almost an hour. You're baking bread here. So this is a little different than a cake. You are baking bread. Now, the, the muffins are probably closer to a half hour because it's much smaller quantity, right? But your banana bread loaves are gonna take close, closer to an hour. So, do you, and are you decorating your bread now or after it's done baking or both? No, you decorate it before it goes in. So I just decorated mine. So there you guys see, I'm doing my best to here. I've got my, my, my walnuts and my chocolate chips on here. Same thing with my little cupcakes or muffins. So I'm gonna go put these in the oven and I'm gonna bring out the one that's done and show you guys what it looks like when it's done. So I will be right back. Now it's interesting. Um, a lot of people have been sharing what their parents might add or something. I remember when I used to do this, we used to do it at Christmas time and we would add cinnamon and nutmeg. So that way it almost tasted like a, uh, like a Christmassy, hot chocolate piece of bread um, with bananas in it. Um, a lot of people put dried fruit in it. So if you have that, that beyond just raisins, but like, you know, dried dates or dried, even dried bananas or dried apricots or peaches, you can put that in there as well. You really, you can be really creative with the mix-ins. Um, just remember that, um, you know, Gabriella put in strawberries. Um, Jeremiah asked if I ever had canned salmon. I have, but I wouldn't put it in banana bread. I don't think that would be good. Fish and bananas usually don't go along. Um, <laughs> but definitely um, get creative with what you want to put in. Just remember, you want it to taste well with bananas and sugar, you know? So don't, I wouldn't suggest put it in spinach unless you really like spinach um, or, you know, put it in something that where it wouldn't mix like salmon. Don't put salmon in your banana bread. That's not going to be a good time. All right, guys, I am back and this is fresh out of the oven. It has been on for uh, just over an hour. You guys see that? All right. And I want to show you guys how to check to make sure the banana bread is done. So I, I if he's a stick, like, um, like one of those skewer sticks, uh, depends on what you have, you can use a toothpick too. But we call this the toothpick test. You do some, you can do it similarly with cakes. But what I do is to make sure it's done is I will stick it in side the banana bread somewhere towards the middle, all the way in and pull it out. And if it comes out clean, your bread is ready. If it comes out and it still has gooeyness on it, your bread's not quite ready yet. And you want to probably put it on for another, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. But that's your quick way to check to make sure that your banana bread is in. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna stick it in. You guys see me going towards the middle here so I can get like a variety of the area. And I'm pulling it out. And as you guys can see, nothing gooey on it, which means our banana bread is ready. And you guys can see here how I decorated it with the chocolate chips and the walnuts. And you can see how they all stayed on the top there. And I love, it, it, I believe that Zoe there that is spelling, or is it Zoe that's spelling your name on the banana bread? That's pretty cool with chocolate chips. So you can get creative with how you decorate it too. Absolutely. And I'm going to go get a pan and I'm actually going to cut it for you guys and show you what it looks like on the inside. So I'm making myself a little bit of room here by taking my dirty dishes and putting them in the sink while I go get a pan. We're going to cut, we're going to slice this and you're going to see what, what you guys have in store for you in about an hour. All right. Um, if you have any questions, um, any thoughts, anything that you might need help with, please put it in chat. And Jeremiah, yeah, Dr. Shaka is a principal. She's our high school principal here. Um, so once she comes back, we're going to cut open the bread, see how it looks. And um, we are going to see what it will look like once it gets done baking. 
All right, so one of the reasons why I like using the parchment paper is I can pull it right out and put it onto my cutting board. So just like that, easy peasy. I have my cutting board with my banana bread on it. I am pulling down our parchment paper here. You guys can see how the re how how wonderful and easy that was because the parchment paper kept it from sticking. And I have my, my bread knife and I'm gonna cut into it so you guys can see here. Ooh, you guys can see the steam coming out, right? And there we go. There is our fresh baked steaming hot banana bread. Well, that's a lot of steam. That's a lot. Of, well, it didn't just come out of the oven. So again, you know, you wanna make sure that when you're doing this, you have a parent because obviously this is quite hot, but take a look at that. To me, that looks perfect.